Hello, and welcome to It's Always Sunny in Hollywood, where we talk about movies that are good, movies that are bad, movies that are so bad they're good. Really, if you can watch it with a tub of popcorn, then we can talk about it. My name is Patrick, and the inner machinations of my mind are an enigma. <laughs> and my name is Red. Um, Your turn, Lugia. Hey, that's it? <laughs> yeah, I, I want that to be my intro, just to say my name. And then... That's it. <laughs> Okay. All right. That'd be a funny contrast because yours went on pretty long, and I just say, and well, I'm red. I have to, I have to introduce it because I. I know that's why it's funny. <laughs> okay. And I'm Lugia, and I hear voices inside my head. All right. So um, let's just start off. Uh, happy Easter, everybody. Happy Easter 2021. So Chocolate there's eggs. A, there's a 100% chance that you are not listening to this on Easter, but we hope but you had a happy was... Easter. There is one uh, event that happened just today that's uh, even more important than Easter. The JoJo Part 6 anime got announced. Yeah, I heard that was a thing now. I should. Have you ever watched JoJo, uh, Lou Patrick? Uh, Lou Patrick is not here, but I can answer for him. Uh, he <laughs> says no. I've seen the first two parts. I've seen the first it. three. Uh, and I got about two episodes into Part 4, and I just put it down. I'm actually looking forward to part four. I'm just not looking forward to part three, especially because of how long it is. I like part three. It's just full of filler, though. Like, God, it has some of the worst pacing I've seen in an anime. Yeah, that's funny that that's the one that really blew it up. That's the popular part. I, I don't oh, yeah, understand um... it, though. We got a special Easter-themed episode for you today. And by Easter-themed, right. I mean we happen to be recording this on Easter Sunday. Yep, That's it. and yep. well, <laughs> and I can it's gonna tie come it in out a little. Week later. I can tie it in a little into Easter. Uh, I mean, <laughs> bunnies. Bunnies. Space Jam Two trailer came out a few days ago. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, yesterday. Yeah, it's basically um from what I've seen, it's uh basically Ready Player One and Ralph breaks the internet. So um. Yeah, that was basically my thought too. Yeah. The entire you know, time watching this. To be fair, it is keeping up with the spirit of the original movie in that it's um a giant soulless advertisement. HBO Max, the movie. Yeah. Well, Lugia, have that... you seen the trailer? I have not, and I don't really care to. I'm not for Space Jam 2, honestly. Oh, yeah, I'm not going to watch Space Jam 2. Well, the one I found really interesting... They I want to cut... watch it just because it's going to be a spectacle. Yeah, what I found interesting about the trailer is that for some reason they cut out... They apparently cut out Pepe Le Pew because, you know, Pepe is kind of a rapist. But they kept the characters from Clockwork Orange. Have any of you guys seen Clockwork Orange? No, but I did I see your not. Twitter post explaining it. Oh, you follow me on Twitter? Yeah. I do not have Twitter, so don't even ask. Oh, how, how many tweets have you seen from my Twitter account? Too many. <laughs> oh, I post some weird shit there, man. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah, uh, basically... The main characters of Clockwork Orange are meant to be just the worst human beings ever. And there is a famous scene from the movie where the main character rapes an old lady while singing, singing in the rain. It's a messed up movie. Let's just leave it at that. And uh, for some reason, that's in this movie for kids. Whatever. As much as I like the Lego movie, I kind of hate this trend that started off where people just use their um, the movies as a giant advertisement. Well, Space Jam predates the Lego movie by over a decade. Yeah, but Space Jam was just trying to sell sneakers. It wasn't trying to sell, like, it's in the entire movie's catalog. I mean, I guess you can say Roger Rabbit. Roger Rabbit was very specific to cartoons. But, you know, whatever. Yeah, out of this, I guess, genre of movies, if we're going to rank them by quality, Lego movie, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, uh, Looney Tunes Back in Action, and those are the only good ones. Anyway, uh, moving along... Yes. Uh, have any of you guys seen Godzilla vs. Kong? Nope. I've only heard people talk about it. All right. I've, seen, I have, I've only seen the memes. I have not seen a single movie in the MonsterVerse. This is apparently the fourth part of a series, so... Well, the only one I've seen is Kong Skull Island, and I, do I did like that one, but I don't really have any interest in checking out the others. Uh, apparently Kong Skull Island is the best one, except... Uh, arguably the 2014 one, which apparently goes a completely different direction and is a lot more artistic. The only Godzilla movie I've seen is Shin Godzilla, who, which is from the director of Neon Genesis, uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion. 
I think I saw a couple of the older movies on TV when I was a kid, but I don't actually remember, you know, which ones. I remember, I think I saw one of the newer Godzilla films. I do not remember what it was called, though. It's probably and... called Godzilla. Was it the Peter Jackson one, the three I, hour long? I don't know. That was King Kong. That wasn't Godzilla. Oh, sorry. I'm mixing up my monsters. That's fine. And okay, well, let's just ignore Godzilla now. So I don't know how into anime you are, Patrick, but Lugia and I are. So um, the new anime season okay. just started. All right, first off, I'm not that into anime. I like a few yeah, shows. Be. I don't religiously watch it, though. Yeah, you should be. All right, whatever. The new season started, uh, and there's a couple interesting entries. Um, My Hero Academia Season 5 started. Um, I have not even seen Season 4. I kind of just switched to the manga after a while, but uh, whatever. Shaman King, which is apparently an anime from when we were kids, is getting remade. It's getting the uh, it's the so-called brotherhood treatment, and apparently it's really good, so that's something to check out, I guess. And the final announcement is uh, Young Sheldon got renewed for three more seasons. I, I like the Big Bang Theory, but I, I don't care for Young Sheldon, so I, I really... I think Young Sheldon's better whatever. than Big Bang Theory, honestly. Eh... It's like a really shitty version of Malcolm in the Middle, but Malcolm in the Middle is like one of the best sitcoms of all time, so even being a fraction as good, it's still decent. Bazinga. Uh, I don't find Big Bang Theory funny at all, but through meme culture, I think Bazinga is like the funniest shit now. I think I think the show is okay. There was a point in time where I liked it a lot, but after moving on to more, I guess, crude I... sitcoms, it, it just didn't really do it for me anymore. Yeah, I mean, I, I should mention you can't, I, you can't please everybody. Yeah, I have never liked The Big Bang Theory, but I've also never been a big fan of uh, laugh track sitcoms. Oh, the God. only one I ever really got into were the ones that like barely used it, like Mash, uh, Seinfeld, and How I Met Your Mother. Um, also, I... like the sitcoms we watched when we were a kid. But you know, whatever. Jake and Josh was great. Who gives a shit. Anyway, let's go in the movie. Uh, All right. All right, so we've uh, gotten through the entertainment news. Now let us move on to the real meat of this episode, and that is the Invisible Man, uh, the 2020 version, not the uh, not the old black and white one. Um, which, by the way, uh, Red, didn't you say you were gonna, you watched that for uh, comparison to this? I did not have time this week. I have got a bunch All of right. projects, but uh, All yeah. right. that's okay. So uh, that's fine. So yeah, just I do, have, I do we... have some cursory knowledge on it, though. Um, so, I do. So yeah. So, disclaimer, we are looking at this movie on its own merits, not comparing it to the original Invisible Man or any other carnation, so. I do know the plot. Uh, this movie is nothing plot-wise. It's completely different. Is that I, I, I imagine so, since it's it's modern. Yeah. That was more in the spirit of the old Universal monsters, like, you know, Frankenstein and shit, so. Okay, I got a good comparison. You know The Mummy, the 1999 Brendan Fraser movie? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's to the original black and white mummy movie as this movie is to the original black and white invisible man as in they're nothing alike except for the title all right so anyway um before we get into the movie uh the uh the uh, production history of this movie is kind of interesting so a new invisible man movie spent years in production but it wasn't until the mid 2010s when it actually started to get somewhere it was supposed to star johnny depp and connect itself to what was known as the dark universe which was a planned cinematic universe by Universal featuring classic monsters like Frankenstein, the Mummy, the Wolfman, so on and so forth. And the Dark Universe actually started in 2017 with The Mummy starring Tom Cruise. And it ended in 2017 with The Mummy starring Tom Cruise. They managed That's to get one sign. installment. But it, it bombed so hard at the box office, Universal basically scrapped the whole thing and decided to refocus uh, all future monster movies as standalone films. And thus, The Invisible Man was switched around. Uh, no Johnny Depp in sight. I don't know why he uh, was taken out, but... He just wanted to work okay. with Tim Burton. I guess so. Well, uh, it's probably because of the abuse allegations. That were proved false, by the way. But he was accused of abuse. Anyway, uh, so... Thus, we have this Invisible Man movie that is not connected to The Mummy in any way. Not connected to anything else. Just its own standalone movie. Uh, it was written and directed by Lee Winnell. Am I saying that right? Lee Winnell. Lee Winnell. And he is uh, best known as the co-creator of the Saw franchise. And 
He previously directed Insidious Chapter 3 and Upgrade, so this guy is primarily yeah. works in uh, horror movies. Upgrade's a pretty good movie. I recommend it. It's kind of like... um. I've heard of Upgrade. I've never seen it, though. It's like a dark sci-fi version of Venom. That I haven't seen Venom. That probably makes no sense, but uh, it's, it's good. <laughs> Don't watch... I wouldn't recommend Venom over Upgrade. Upgrade's better. Uh -huh, that's what I've heard. Well, I've, 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 I've not heard much about Upgrade, but I have heard about Venom, so... Yep. Uh, he also uh, acted in the Saw movies. Uh, he played Adam, who was the main character of the first one. Never seen Saw, so I cannot comment. Okay. Neither um, can I. He's a decent actor. I get, yeah. I, I'm not a horror movie guy, so... Yeah, the, the production I of the really, first I can't, I can't, I can't really speak for anything. I know it's weird since I selected this movie, but I was curious about it. Yeah. Well, um, I think Lee Manel is a pretty good director. Um, is, I think that covers most of the background, right? Yeah, and uh, there's no Johnny Depp here, but we do have Elizabeth Moss uh, playing the main character, uh, not the Invisible Man, uh, man, uh, the girl lead. You'll go into them a bit later. Uh, actually, right. a lot of actually, I realized a lot of the cast in this movie they primarily worked in television. Like uh, Elizabeth yes. Moss is from uh, is known for Mad Men and Handmaid's Tale. Mad yeah, a lot Men of other a very people. good show, by the way. I highly recommend it. I've seen the first episode of Mad Men. You should watch the whole thing. So All yeah, right. um, um, that's pretty much it for background. This is a movie that was supposed to be part of a franchise that was switched to a standalone film, directed by um, a guy who created one of the pop, one of the most popular horror movie franchises. Yep, created with his uh, best friend, who was the actual director, but you know, eventually he got there. All right, so that's good for the behind scenes stuff. Um, how does this movie fare out? Well, uh, how about we get into a plot synopsis? Yep. Uh, we're going to keep it spoiler-free just for now because the movie's so recent, so I highly doubt many people saw it. Yeah, we'll probably save spoilers for the end. Yeah, yeah. So the basic plot is this. After escaping from an abusive and controlling relationship, Cecilia Cass, played by Elizabeth Moss, believes that her ex-boyfriend is stalking her, even though he is claimed to have committed suicide. She eventually realizes that she is in fact being stalked by a man using an invisible suit, so she tries to prove to everybody that she is not crazy. Yeah. And thus we have our horror movie of the day. Yep. The big theme of the movie is uh, basically gaslighting. It's, um, I guess, an allegory for gaslighting is the right word. I'm not sure if that's the right word. It's probably not the right word. Never mind. <laughs> gaslighting right, so, is uh, involved. So, guys, uh, general thoughts. Lukia, what'd you think? Uh, well, okay, so just like you, I'm not really that into horror movies. Not that I don't want to watch them, it's just that they have a few a quirks that I'm not too keen on. Sorry? A lot of them are bad, too. Yeah. Uh, it's it's the genre that's apparently the cheapest to make, so that results in a lot of really good creative stuff and a lot of really bad low-effort stuff. I guess that explains why there's a lot of horror movies released. Uh, Pretty yeah. much. It's so low budget. Almost every horror movie is profitable. It's damn near impossible to make a horror movie bomb. I think from a general plot synopsis, I think I I like the idea that Cecilia had to prove that she wasn't crazy because there was just this guy in an invisible suit running around killing people and everyone's assuming that it's her doing it. I thought it would take a completely different turn, but I'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, the acting was it was all right for the most part. Um, I know you guys find the acting more favorable, but... Well, I think Elizabeth Moss's acting was really great. Uh, and Aldous Hodge, I think I think he did pretty good, but um, I'll admit Adrian, eh, not as good. The, the villains I didn't think were that great, but yeah. the main characters I thought were pretty good, and even the child actor was decent. I agree. Cecilia Moss delivers an excellent performance. Elizabeth Moss. What did I say? Whatever, close Cecilia enough. Cecilia Moss. Moss. I am so sorry, Elizabeth Moss, if you're listening to this. You're probably not, but I'm sorry. Uh, another thing I liked were uh, the special effects used in this movie. Like, the suit itself, that looked pretty cool. Yeah, yeah it was really yeah. convincing. And, like, when, when Cecilia is, like, being thrown around and picked up and everything and there's nobody there, that was, that was really cool. I found yeah, that well, funny items, more well, than... All the items were flying... I mean, it was funny, but it was still impressive, like, that how seamlessly they were able to do it all. Yeah. Especially because, like, this this is a Blumhouse movie, so it's a pretty low budget. What is the budget of this movie, actually? 
I think like um, four million. Yeah, I could be wrong. Okay, that's that's decently small. Yeah, like ten million is considered low budget. So like that, this is really low budget. Seven million actually. All right, that's more. Uh, I was, I was, I was close. Should I get into my dislikes, or do you guys want to talk uh, about what you liked? Yeah, I feel like uh, you talk about what you like. All right, yeah. If we're just getting general thoughts, honestly, I really liked this movie. Um, I thought it was, I thought it was very engaging. I thought the performances were great. I thought the effects were neat. Uh, I was just completely engaged the entire time. Uh, it does have a few issues, particularly around the end, but overall, I thought this was a really solid film. Yeah, what I really liked about the movie is just the direction. I thought it was, I thought it was really good, especially how like they how they always framed it in a way where it almost implied that he might be in the background and you always got yeah this, like 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 the cinematography tension like the cinematography there's always like a space like an so empty when they're space. outside you could see his breath yeah i'm guessing yeah. Lee, i'm guessing lee he must have been like watching james wan really closely and like just taking notes on how to direct because he is a very good director right out of the gate like it's very impressive like for someone this yeah so like in every scene you're like wait is so he good. there is he listening is he in the room Technical. yeah <laughs> And I think I've already said before, I thought Elizabeth Moss did a really great job. I think I credit a lot of that to the makeup, like her hair and like the bags under her eyes. She's a great actor and everything else I've seen her in. So I guess we can hop into negatives now. Uh, what didn't you like about it, uh, Lugio? All right. Uh, if we're going to talk about negatives, we're going to talk about spoilers. All right. So um, spoiler alert. For the people listening at home, the like twenty people, forty people that might be listening, who knows? Man, this is a terrible intro. Um, <laughs> we're not in the intro. In, um, uh, whatever. Uh, whatever. Just say, what, just say what your thoughts. I went into this movie with a certain set of expectations. Like I didn't think it would be as simple as I thought it was. The movie is just about a man in an invisible suit stalking Cecilia. I thought this would be about an inner conflict with Cecilia trying to blame murders that the Invisible Man, Invisible Man has done, when in actuality she would have been responsible for those murders. Oh. So I thought this would be I, I more guess, of a but... psychological horror film, but it didn't turn out to be mm. like that. I guess it's just like, um, I feel like that's a very common trope in slasher movies. And again, I know you guys haven't seen many horror movies, but that's actually very common well sort of i guess uh i don't know when patrick said this movie was going to be like memento that's what i kind of thought oh well i, yeah. I said it I, I said it it's like memento in that it's about a relationship one of them is dead and that there's a bit of a mystery okay yeah my disappointment in the movie is the opening scene we see the suit and i feel like it ruined the mystery i would have really liked it if we didn't know like it just opened right with uh cecilia already at her friend's house and when we see all the invisible stuff, it's left to us to dis to like question: Is it all in her head or is it not? But because she saw the suit in the very beginning, like I already knew immediately. He's like, "Oh, okay." I mean, yeah, I guess with the title that, "Invisible that, Man," that could have that could have been more of a mystery. Like, and there's really no point in her seeing it. Because I thought it would've been interesting if, like, from a gaslighting perspective, uh, the audience themselves was like questioning Cecilia too. And then later we find out, oh, no, she was telling the truth. Like, I thought that would have been a more interesting take story-wise. Actually, guys, speaking of the suit, uh, when during that scene when she's in his house and she's trying to find the suit and she finds it and, like, you know, it's just an empty room and she flicks something and, like, the suit appears, I thought of Chicken Little. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because of the little plates that camouflage it, I'm like, oh, it's Chicken Little. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's been years since I saw Chicken Little. Yeah. Chicken Little is also about an abusive relationship. Hey, ties. Oh my god. <laughs> butt cluck can cluck my butt. I have nostalgia for Chicken Little. I remember the video game where he's buff as shit. That's the only <laughs> thing I remember. He's in Kingdom <laughs> Hearts. He's just swole as hell. Hey, that, that's that's our Easter anyway, connection. That's that's our Easter connection, chickens. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> Actually, no. She was Cecilia different... does make eggs. Cecilia does make eggs in the beginning, so there's that. <laughs> She burns them at uh, one point. Well, not her, well, no, she, but you know what I mean. She doesn't yeah, burn yeah. them. Yes. Do any of you guys think the plot was a bit convoluted at some times? Uh, not really. This was pretty straightforward, honestly. Yeah. yeah I, I guess convoluted isn't the right word, but I thought it was like 
there's some stuff that was so that was a little bit stupid or like really obvious like um when she bought her friend the ladder i was like man can't you have like set up the ladder a little bit more subtly like come on uh like i thought it, i thought that scene was really funny honestly i thought it was a little bit silly with the, the way she was doing the ladder stuff also in the middle of the restaurant like i, I thought it was a little bit strange that no one noticed the floating knife, but you know, whatever. I can accept that one. Suspension, disbelief, whatever. I don't get why she caught the knife after uh, the murder happened. Oh, she did it. It was put in her hand. Yeah. Although, it was, put in her hand. it was very strange how incredibly fast that was. Like, I'm trying to imagine, like, the dude in... Because what I imagine with some of these scenes is what the actual dude in the visible suit was doing. And I don't know logistically how that worked, that 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 kit, that, uh throat slitting scene i was like well, how does that that doesn't make sense because i'm like trying to imagine like the dude was like all right so he like pulled it really quickly slit the throat and then shoved it right back in the hand and she didn't even notice until she i don't know that's just... no, she, she whatever wait the... cecilia or the woman next to her who first noticed no cecilia didn't even notice like uh what happened no, she... until she looked no up. she knows she knows she was just in shock oh sorry she... but like she couldn't still, believe what it was, was happening it still happened really fast. I was like, man, that was... I don't think I could slit someone's throat that fast. I don't know. I've never tried to slit someone's throat, but I don't think, think I could. Let's, that think, think, Let's think try before to keep it that way. Ed. Think before you speak. We, we've been talking about a lot of a lot of the criticisms we've had. Uh, actually, I have... To balance things out, I have two more positives I neglected to mention. Go ahead. Um, uh, this, is, this is a small thing, but I really liked the shades of blue in this movie. I thought they really popped. And it, I thought it really helped enhance uh, the t the dark tone of everything. This movie looked pretty good. Yeah, yeah. It was shot like um. Uh, you guys ever seen any David Fincher movies? Maybe. Uh, no. Okay, kind of so. remind me of that. It's like an old Gone Girl with a uh, uh, Fight Club or something like that. Where I think this was shot on digital camera and digital. It really makes it look like um colder, which I thought that was yeah. good. I liked how cold. Yeah, it was. this movie this movie looked cold, and I really I really liked that. Because it really helped. Yeah. Also, um, another thing, I really, I think I said this before, but I really liked the cinematography, especially during the third act when, spoiler, they're uh, they're in the hall of the asylum and the Invisible Man is, like, killing everybody and, like, he put, yeah. smashes a guy against, like, the floor and the camera follows the guy's head on the floor. Yeah, that still stuff, straight. that stuff was an upgrade a lot. So if you thought the that scene was good, check out Upgrade, because, like, Upgrade is a straight-up action movie. Um, Actually, guys, speaking of the third act, um, funny thing happened. So I watched this movie uh, on HBO Max uh, with my dad, and we were at the scene where, at the end, where Cecilia shoots the Invisible Man and he drops dead to the floor. Uh, the, like, the, the second after he fell to the floor, HBO Max lost connection, and I yelled, Are you kidding me?! Uh, Roll credits. This is this was that is the worst time because it was getting <laughs> really good. Since we're at it, uh, what did you guys think of the ending? Oh boy, we're going there, aren't we? The I was ending... mixed on it. I, I don't know. I felt yeah, it, it was odd because it felt so out of character for Cecilia. Yeah, I mean, I kind of liked how I guess she was not who we thought she was. Yeah, kind I, don't know. I feel like it should have built it up more because it it just added a ton of questions. Yeah, yeah it just kind of happened. Well, guys, let me ask: Do you think Adrian was telling the truth? Seemed like he wanted to redeem it. himself. No, no, I think Adrian like deserved to die, but I felt like they should have built up Cecilia slowly. Like they kept her character super consistent for the whole movie, and then this just felt like a sudden heel turn. I thought it would would have made more sense if like she got a bit more unhinged as it went along. That way it would make sense for her to kill. Well, here's the thing, though. He faked his suicide, and he also probably faked his own kidnapping. Yeah, I... I mean, he did, I, but... I, but my question is, what was his brother's motivation for helping? Money? No, my understanding I, was I, that the brother was also a victim of Adrian's abuse. And it was just kind of a case of another abuse victim just... I was kind of... I don't know. That's what I assumed. Maybe I don't know, but I I didn't understand when she took the mask off and it was it was it it wasn't Adrian, it was his brother. I'm like, um, what? And even when the movie ended, I was like, um, what? Yeah, yeah. The ending was a 
bit messy. Well, it wasn't messy yeah, enough to like, ruin it, but like, I don't yeah, know. it didn't ruin it. I I still thought this was a really solid movie overall. Yeah. Uh, what would just be your I guess overall ranking? I guess grade. I don't know. I'd I say like seven out of ten. Yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah. I mean, it's still a good movie. It just has a few little quirks that kind of kept it from yeah. being a solid movie overall. Seven to me means it's pretty good. So yeah. I, I'd consider it a compliment. Uh, I put it like below Scott Pilgrim, but I'm a cheerleader of Memento, but above The Departed, so like right in the middle of everything I think, you've seen. Yeah, I think that's where I'd put it too. Honestly, I'd I'd give this movie an eight. Um, I don't know exactly where I'd put it amongst uh, Memento and Scott Pilgrim, but I do know this is definitely among the higher up of movies we've talked about so far. Yeah, no, oh, this definitely. is definitely the good end. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm 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 glad I finally got to see this movie. Yeah, well, um, I got some recommendations for movies that are kind of similar. Um, these are mostly horror movies, but they're like they're kind of a horror movie where it's not too like shock these are good i i think you'll like these ones um so first one i was thinking was nightmare on elm street one and three i want to see the uh, first one so bad one because um it's got the whole idea of like this person killing all, all these dreams and no one believes the main character and everyone thinks she's crazy and shit and and three specifically takes place inside like a ward for like uh like a psych ward or uh re- rehab center or something like that so it's it's got like a similar vibe to like Cecilia when she's like thrown in jail and stuff. Then there's Scream, which how it connects to this movie is a bit of a spoiler, but it's got a pretty interesting twisty ending. Um I'm not going to go into detail. Then there's Perfect Blue. Perfect Blue is probably one of my favorite movies of all time. It's like a 10 out of 10 to me. I'm actually going to recommend it one day in the podcast later down the road so be prepared, but um the way it connects is that essentially it's another case there's like this psychological thing where um she she thinks that she's being haunted by like a ghost or something i, I don't really want to spoil it but um you know things aren't as it seems uh it got a similar vibe to nightmare on elm street i guess in that department but it's a lot more symbolic i also put black swan i have never seen this movie but everyone tells me per- it's a rip off of perfect blue so i'm assuming that they're similar isn't Black Swan a movie about like a dancer? Yeah, but uh, Perfect Blue is um about a Japanese pop star, so a similar thing. I don't know. I've I've never seen Black Swan, so I I can't say. But from, from the what director I've Black Swan, seen... Black Swan has a couple of very similar shots to Perfect Blue, and the director of Black Swan did try to buy the rights to Perfect Blue before because he wanted to make a live action remake. Okay, next movie you recommended is Candyman. You guys ever seen this? No, uh, no. I know there's a new Candyman movie coming out, but I, yeah. I don't um, know. yeah. This one also has a similar idea to Nightmare on Elm Street, where you know no one really believes the lady, and she's being haunted by a ghost type creature. A lot of horror movies honestly have that. Even Child's Play has the idea of like no one believing the kid. So, yeah, here's people not believing is like the main character when they say they're being chased by a supernatural maniac that's a pretty common trope in horror movies honestly i see you put us and is the reason for that because elizabeth moss was also in that yeah (laughs) that's really it that's the only reason i put it there (laughs) um then i was gonna recommend promising young woman it came out the same year as invisible man Um, last year yeah it's got a similar uh, it's really not that similar, but it's got like tangentially related to me. I think a little bit with like people not coming, being who they seem, and like uh, main character is a woman, and she's sort of got a shitty deal. Um, and filmmaking wise, it reminds me of Upgrade, and for some reason it gave me a similar vibes to Split at a couple times, just like in terms of cinematography, but also like there is the psychological aspect of it. So um, that's it for my recommendations. Although. Looking at, back up her notes, uh, I, we didn't really talk about him much, but what did you guys think of Aldous Hodge in the movie? He played James? Police officer? No, uh, he was the friend. Uh, uh, yeah, the police officer. Oh, right, he was a police officer, yes. Oh, my. <laughs> he, was, he was pretty good. He was good. Yeah, he was pretty good. Um, 
I just want to mention it because he was in this movie called One Night in Miami, which came out uh, also last year, though I, it's it technically came out this year. It's weird. I, I just want to recommend, just, you guys should watch that. It's really good. Mad Men. Apparently Oliver Jackson Cohen was in the Haunting of Hill House series. Was You guys ever see that? Is that good? No. Yeah, I don't recognize anything except Aldous Hodge and Elizabeth Moss, so I guess I'll just leave it at that. All oh, right. fun so... fact. Aldous Hodge was in Die Hard 3, except he was like seven years old, so he played like a little kid. So, so uh, any uh, further thoughts on Invisible Man? Oh, just a pretty solid horror thriller. It's a little right. cheesy here and there. A little bit, and it, it has was... occasional horror, dumb horror movie tropes. Yeah, like it wasn't even that scary stupid. for a horror movie. It was more or less a mystery, or at least that's how I took it. Actually, um, funny thing, uh, I watched this movie with my dad. Um, originally, my mom was going to watch with us, but like as soon as like the first shot, she was like, oh, wait, I saw the trailer for this movie. No, can't do it. Can't do it. And she left. And I'm like, uh, you're not even going to give it a shot. She's like, nope, nope. Saw the trailer. Nope. Just, just tell her it's not scary. <laughs> I, I explained the whole movie to her. And she's like, yeah, it's a good thing I didn't watch it. Because my, right. my mom gets easily spooked. I mean, I do too, but yeah. yeah. All right, so now it's uh, your anyway, turn to recommend um, a movie. Red, it's your turn. And I'm not going to yes. lie, I'm a, I'm a bit worried because last time you recommended But I'm a Cheerleader, which is a bit of a difficult movie to talk about. <laughs> Yeah, so, so hopefully this time it's not something it's not as yeah blazing uh, saddles. There's a bit of a story about uh, my thought no. process. I'm not doing that. I decided not to go with a controversial topic. But um, initially I was thinking about recommending Pain and Game, but then I remembered you guys have never actually seen a Coen Brother movie, right? I I've seen uh, I've seen so. Oh Brother Where Art Thou. I've seen Oh Brother Where Art Thou, and I've seen uh, Hail Caesar. So anyway, I was saying the Coen Brothers are probably my favorite directors at least favorite american directors and um so i decided to pick the first coen brother movie i ever saw it was called burn after reading burn after reading not yeah, i've not heard that one at all doesn't sound familiar released in 2008 it's a uh, dark comedy um i think it's incredibly funny it's on imdb tv for free so that's how i recommend okay. you guys want to watch it it's got brad pitt and john malkovich okay oh uh, brad so... pitt's character is so good in this but yeah, burn after reading. It is uh, my recommendation for next week. Yeah, Coen Brothers, they're some of the best directors ever. Uh, this isn't one of their most popular movies, but I'd still rank it in my top five. But uh, it's, Let me it's just not take a look and see if I've actually ones. seen any of their movies. I probably should have recommended one of the more famous ones, like No Country or Fargo, but I Yeah, I was I about to say, now, they also did Fargo, and I know you like that one a lot. It's my second favorite. Yeah. All right. I... I I just decided to go with the first one I saw. That way you guys got the same introduction I did. Okay. So you're sure this isn't going to be as difficult a movie to talk about? No, it's just like a regular old crime drama. Okay. I mean, all the characters are pretty terrible people, but, like, it's funny. Yeah, I, uh, I don't think I've seen any of their films yet. All right. And, and I, 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 I don't mean to sound so worried, but, but I'm a cheerleader caught me off guard. Yeah, I'll, anytime we do something with questionable subject matter, I'll... Uh, I guess I'll give you more warning. I mean, but, but I'm a cheerleader is fine. Like I said, I, I give it. It was still like good. Because I am going to recommend plenty of movies relating to race because um. Later I mean, down I mean, the line, eventually. I mean, I didn't hate it. It just I I didn't really understand it. And that's yeah. fine. Was yeah. Was I couldn't warn you for but I'm a cheerleader because I didn't see that movie before. So I guess from now on, I'm just going to recommend movies I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> or at least no, satires no, no. you've also seen. I knew nothing about But I'm a Cheerleader. I was just like, fuck it, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, I, I'd i never seen The Invisible Man before. So I'm yeah, like, but and, I feel like you got... <laughs> and like, I... <laughs> I'm I'm going to be the one that's going to recommend really off stuff, huh? I was thinking about yes. recommending... <laughs> I was thinking about recommending Super, which me and Lugia saw last night. Yeah, you would have hated Super. Good yeah. Yeah. That's kind of a no go I, for Patrick. Now, now I'm very curious. That's from the same guy who directed Guardians of the Galaxy, but you would not James believe James Gunn. It. Yeah. Oh, okay. But this is early uh, James Gunn. This is a James I mean, Gunn with directed I fucked know, up shit. I know, I know James Gunn has gotten in some controversy over stuff he did in the past. So is this like a relic of that? Kind of. Yes and no. Oh I mean, boy. It's got, a, it's got a really good heart to it, but there is. It's fucked up in some areas. It's fucked up, like... Oh boy, so... Yeah, like I... a brief rape scene, that's probably the worst part of the movie, the rape scene, but like, everything else is pretty good. 
A lot of violence. A lot of violence. Pretty gory. It's like funny gory though, so I don't know. Oh boy, so <laughs> this movie got some <laughs> violence too, but like eh, to a lesser extent. You, you okay. won't need to worry. Nothing queasy. Okay, so super. <laughs> no, we're doing right, burn, I'll, after reading. I'll, I'll, burn after reading. But I'll I'll be cautious if I ever decide to watch Super. That's an if. That's a hard if. But that's not what we're talking about. We are talking about burn after reading next. So all right, that should be interesting. All right, see you all then, and hope you had a happy Easter.